Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and Kerbal Space Program Point Two Two is released, and I am going to Minmus using the basic parts that you get right at the start of the sandbox. Um, I sure I can go further, but this was the first thing I actually attempted, so I'm going to recreate it. I may I may have mentioned this in the interview with Felipe, um, <laughs> so. Because we don't have any decouplers, we have to basically make things explode in sequence. Um, it's almost like rocket surgery, really. It's not a science, it is an art form. Um, really, it's a lot of guesswork. Uh, crew, the shores look inviting and you, as you watch the waves roll into the coast. Yes, excellent information. And we're on to our next stage. Also note, attached to the side, we have a couple of extra pods. In the early game, those pods are the only way to add extra torque and extra charge. There's no steering uh, other than the pod torque, so it's important to take make use of these things. It's not a good idea to put kerbals in them because they're never going to return in any livable way. Okay, we're almost on to the last stage. Uh, a lot of people can are confused by... Um, the heat flow and they think that having you know engines directly above something is what really causes it to overheat it's actually just having the engines in contact with each other and not having a place for the heat to go to that's what causes them to explode there we go on to the last stage and we gotta throttle up and get this thing arcing over now we're 16 kilometers up and we are moving 400 meters per second up fast this is a steeper ascent than I would have liked, but I think I can bring it over nevertheless. 500 meters per second. This is the one we're going to get at just the right moment to maximize the amount of delta V. There we go. And wasted tons of it. Well, never mind. We're not going to care. Now, uh, 30 kilometers up. And we're going up pretty fast. Let's see the map. And... 58 kilometers well we're still suborbital uh, it is a pretty steep suborbital trajectory this is not my most efficient launch but I record the cruise information whatever yeah the rec record cruise observations is the standardized message you get okay let's EVA quickly to get the EVA report ah you're starting to feel you should really get back inside yes that is Jebediah. Even Jebediah gets scared. Actually, if you watch this, he gets scared quite a lot because he's been jumping. Uh, there's a lot of things exploding, and even exploding things make Jebediah scared. Uh, even even a badass. Okay, so now we're going to set up a suborbital. Get another crew report. You record your cruise assessment. Yeah, check the, the game files and you can actually read all the messages. Actually, don't. It's much fun funner to find these things out for yourselves. And the music kicks in. Okay, EVA report. You've recorded your observations. Okay, no interesting observations in low curb in orbit. I think that should say I'm floating in the most peculiar way or something. Uh four times normal speed and now we're back to normal and getting ourselves into orbit crew report review report you record your cruiser come on where are the interesting ones darn it notice my electric charge recharging the rocket engines are the only way which you can use to recharge your electric charge so, you know, when you're firing those engines, that's when you should be transmitting everything home, and then otherwise you should be storing stuff. And we're back to four times normal speed. Um, so, yeah, you can store uh, as many EVA reports, or rather you can store one EVA report for each biome that you're in. And the biomes include things like different altitudes, you know, low orbit versus high orbit, and different bodies. Uh, or being on the surface. So you can store one of each of those in the capsule, but you can only store one crew report. So that's why you see me getting out, doing a report, and getting back in. Um, that's the best way to bring lots of science home. And at this point, I probably don't have the power to keep transmitting these things. Although I have just recharged my batteries by boosting up. And I've got myself my min miss encounter. Still have a reasonable amount of fuel left. Hopefully I will have enough to actually land this sucker. EVA report and off towards Minmus. 
So we should probably pause. Yep, take another report because now we're in high orbit. Now we want to trim our orbit because we want to get close to Minmus and we want to be orbiting in the same direction as its rotation. We are not doing a free return trajectory, so it, it doesn't matter you know, what way we're going to do it. We do want to be aligned with the plane, so you see me tweaking that. Uh, so uh, set myself up, and it's only a 4.7 meter per second burn, which is absolutely minuscule and of course that's what you want to do you want to make these corrections well before you arrive at the target so you're not having to spend more to correct the the actual orbit in fact we're so sensitive because we're talking like a few meters per second just rotating the spacecraft causes the orbits to you know shake around and go nuts okay now we're making final uh, corrections to make sure we actually orbit in the correct direction and should things go around or go wrong, we'll actually put ourselves into orbit that will put us close to Kerbin. But I think we have enough fuel to actually get into orbit and land. That's my plan, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so just really tiny, 11 meter per second burn. That's all we need. Again, you know, just make the corrections as far away from the target as you dare. Uh, you know, that's really how space probes work. You'll find that they set up multiple maneuvers and they'll set up multiple maneuver windows and they'll make the first one and hopefully if it's right, they don't need the second one and the third one. But uh, the first one, the earlier you maneuver, the bigger the effect generally. Okay, so getting into orbit is just a standard circularization maneuver. Again, we're on the equator, so it should be relatively efficient. And here we go, coming down, and the music is jittering around like something crazy. No, it is not Gabber. And yet, a hundred meter per second to get into orbit. You notice I'm burning at relatively low thrust uh, because, to be honest, I'm used to doing these kind of maneuvers with you know, LV 909s that have tiny thrust. So this is much more comfortable. Uh, I spend a while just orbiting the planet or orbiting the moon, hoping that when I um, hoping that a flat surface will come around to the day side, and then I eventually just get bored and say, "Ah, screw it! I'll land on the night side." So unfortunately, you're gonna have to watch the landing on the night side because I was far too lazy for my own good. Uh, there we are. So flying across the surface, I can see the large flat area that I'm aiming for. Now, this is a very tall and thin rocket. You could build um, you could build a rocket with enough delta V to land on the moon. In fact, I know it's possible, right? It's, it's absolutely possible, but you probably want to kind of spread it out and make it wider. Uh, Minmus, of course, has these really flat areas where you can, in fact, balance a rocket that is tall and thin like this on its tailpipe. And we're coming into land at last. We're going to kill our velocity really slowly. I've got this firing at the least amount of thrust I can muster for this. And even then, I think that will be too much. going to concentrate on killing all our horizontal velocity and then come down with the least amount of lateral velocity when on, onto our tail. Um, if we start to fall over, hopefully I'll be able to throttle up and get out of there. But uh, I hope I don't need to. Okay, now we're down to about 20 meters per second. So this is terminal. We're going to just actually make a concerted effort to kill our lateral velocity without ruining our vertical. Let's just get this lined and cut. Okay. Sliding it onto our tail now. 400 meters up, 11 meters per second. And we'll just fire up the rocket ever so slightly. Yes. And okay. Hopefully that will land nicely, but who knows? I'm just trying to make sure that we slow down just enough without burning too much fuel. Obviously, suicide burn would be by far the most efficient way to do this. But a suicide burn is... Uh, it's hard to kill all that lateral velocity. So I'm just sliding it down onto its tail... Three, four meters per second. I, I don't know how much mass this thing really has. You can probably barely see it in the image here, but uh, 
there's no yeah there's no lighting or anything on it because I haven't developed the technology for lighting I also have not developed the technology for things like wheels or wings but I do have a functioning rocket yes the tech tree is a little um, interesting but it does make sense from a gameplay standpoint and that's really more important okay the eagle has landed or the alpha has landed I don't know the something has landed and we're more or less sitting and we're slowly burning power so let's turn off SAS and hopefully I'll settle I'm just gonna watch this quick save before I do it and it's sadly just a little don't fall over don't fall over sir there we go yeah excellent now it is time to get out and go for a walk Mr. Jebediah, you are tasked with three very important things. First of all, we need you to tell us all about what it looks like out there. Secondly, we need a flag. And finally, we need a surface sample. So uh, do that in whatever order you like. Plant flag is first. Let's plant the flag because that's the first thing on the list. Okay, and it's the default Kerbal flag. What should we say? What should we say? Um... My first mission. Yay! I got here. I got here with... Here's what low tech can do. Yes, that's a good idea. Now get an EVA report. You feel great. Okay. This surface seems to consist of tiny crystal-like brain grains. Very pretty. Probably not edible. If you read some of the messages, the Kerbals seem to regard Minmus as being... Uh, resembling pudding, let's say. So uh, they make many comments about how uh, Minmus isn't doesn't appear to be particularly edible. And oh, come on, jump in there. There we go. In you go. Yes. Excellent. And now to the skies once more, and back home to the planet Kerbin. Uh, actually, I think I'll, well, we'll, we'll decide what we do, but I, I think I'm going to try and fly by the moon because I did see I did that. And back to four times normal speed. So we're just going to put ourselves into orbit and then try and get ourselves a lunar encounter solution. Uh, not even sure if I have enough fuel, to be honest, to get back to Kerbin. Uh, at the very least, I guess I, I do have Jebediah and his jetpack and we could p get out and push that would not be an ideal solution because I did it correctly earlier and it would seem rather cheaty especially since people are talking about plans to go to Duna uh, Duna is not outside the realm of possibility for this level of hardware okay so let's try and get those pointers to align and align so we're gonna fly past the moon but I haven't set up my nah, conic patch count number so I have no idea where I'm going to go after it so I'll, once I leave the sphere of influence of Minmus that will be when I make my uh, adjustments so I can fly by the moon in a manner which brings me back to Kerbin without burning too much extra fuel I mean to be honest if you can get an encounter with the moon then with practically no fuel from that point on you can get yourself home it just requires enough, um, it requires a certain trust and a certain innate understanding of how you're going to use the moon. Basically, you're going to randomly encounter it and then trim that encounter to put, put you into the orbit you want. And there's the moon. Let's get an EVA report. I submit my report and I'm storing a bunch of data there. Sorry, we're not going to go into orbit because I don't believe we have enough fuel. I don't know what it would take to get into orbit, but I'm not going to waste my time. Instead, I'm falling back to Kerbin. Woohoo! Flying across the continent. And we'll just turn ourselves around because the only thing we care about is the capsule. We would decouple the capsule if it wasn't for the fact that we hadn't invented the decoupler yet. No, we're just going to have to uh, tough it out. And hopefully this thing, when it lands, does not destroy the entire rocket. Parachute deployed. And we're coming down. 141, 140, 130, slowing down here. I have no idea how fast we're going to... Our terminal velocity will be. Okay. 
Um, we're not slow enough. We're going to break things. Thankfully, we have the resources at our disposal to make use of both their rocket breaking and, of course, good old fashioned hardware assisted breaking. Just burn a little bit of fuel to cushion it. Oh, no. Well, hey, the capsule survived. That is all that matters. Capsule survived. Let's see if I can flip it around so I can get out. No, no. Oh, never mind. Just get. Oh, I was trying to get it down. So never mind. Let's just use the magic recover vessel. Yes. And so what do we do? We made 372 science for this mission. Awesome, huh? So that should unlock a fair chunk of the tech tree. Specifically, I want to go for unlocking decouplers, batteries, and solar panels. Everything else is gravy. Once you have that, it means that I can build all my space probes and, you know, just basically send data forever. The That's the hard part. From, from this point on, it should be... I, I don't know, maybe I could get everywhere else for one with um with the one mission unlock and the the batteries and stuff are along the bottom here there are batteries plus the exposure experiment and there's a solar panel and another battery oh we'll have lights for landing excellent why would i use power for lights when i could use power for transmitting data okay can we should we unlock this these are better solar panels and that's probe rockets. No, we don't need that. Uh, experiments are good to unlock because m more experiments means more science. But I think, uh, you know, if I was being a good player, I would actually unlock the experiments first. But honestly, I want to make everything easy from this point out. So unlock. Yes, radial decoupler. Nice to have. And slightly better engine. Nice to have. And I don't think we've got enough science to do everything else. So that is me for my first mission in career mode. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.